All right, snapper, snowblower. I think it's like a 1022 EX or something like that. I'll get the model number here for you in a minute. And this is what we're replacing. This belt was all jammed up in there. And that's what we got to replace today. Got the new one over there. Uh, we'll go over those in a second. But uh, let's get you that model number. All right, so there's the model number. 169-7340. All right, let's go over the uh, belt situation here. As you can see, this one's kind of glossed over. And then also got a big rip in it. And this was jammed in the wheel. I'll show you where. Um, this snowblower actually came from an estate sale, I believe, rummage sale. Uh, I got it for about $80. And I thought I'd throw a belt on it. it sounded like it sounded like a belt was uh, broken when I uh, talked to the guy. So I thought it would be an easy fix. So hopefully there's nothing wrong with the pulley alignment or anything like that. But um, when I pulled the uh, belt off, as you can see, it says Micro, micro V 4PK945. And it says 52520 there. Let's see if there's any more markings on it. None that I can read. Yeah, so that's the only one I can read. So I thought that, and it says gates up here. So I thought for sure that this might have been a, like a replacement belt or something along those lines and basically just failed. And I was like, oh, I'll get a good one. I'll get the OEM one and replace it with a good one. So I ordered this one. Um, off a parts supplier on eBay. Uh, Snapper has snapperparts.com and the belt there was like, I, th I think it was like $47 or something. It was a pretty expensive belt. And then it gave a number here of 709-868 and that was the Snapper part. So I was like, oh, I definitely want that. So I kind of searched around and then I figured out Briggs & Stratton has the Snapper part. Uh, Briggs & Stratton, I believe, makes Snapper stuff. If, I, if I'm... I believe I'm right on that one, or they make the engines at least for it or something like that. So I went through all the trouble of tracking down this number and ordering the Briggs & Stratton small engine parts number. And then when they sent it to me, what shows up? Of course, a P, uh, 4 PK945. So exact same number. And then 52, this one has says 52020 on the engine part here but it's still a Gates number. Um, the pisser about that was that this this number, you can actually look up on Napa online, and I believe the belt was only like $15 online. I paid like $33 for this at like a, a small engine place, and then the Snapper Direct place wanted, I, I believe it was like $47 for the belt. Long story short, look up this small number, the Gates, uh, 4PK945, and then just get that number, and then you should be on up you should be set from there. Uh, 10 millimeter here, nothing special. Got here. So, give you a bit of a close up where the uh, belt was jammed up was right in here. And then, so I just I was able to just like yoink it out of there. Um, I think this pulley is so close to this outer um, piece here to basically keep it inside there as a little bit of a guide. But I don't know how to get it actually in there and then to wrap it around. Um, so this is the idler pulley part, and then I think when you pull on it, this is the engine, so this spins, and then this is the idler pull part, so when you pull the handle up there, this moves down. So I think we got to take this off. There's no other way to get that in there without damaging the belt. So, because the belt is actually wider than this space is here. So we got to take this off. Um, I guess, uh, I think I'm going to use an impact. So we'll get that set up. Uh, I got a 17 millimeter out here. Well, that wasn't very tight. 
All right, lock washer, washer. Oh, here's all the piece orientation, and this would just pick up and go on there. Uh, if you didn't have an impact, you probably could just jam something up in here, like a 2x4 or something, just to keep this from turning, and then uh, you'd be able to uh, just pull it off. This was not under very much tension. I think this must have been off already. I can, um, I can already see some marks in the nut already. And then the lock washer. Yeah, it wasn't on there very tight. So I'm guessing somebody might have been in here. I wonder if this thing eats belts or something. Um, that feels fine. And the motor, I can't really feel because you can't turn it. All right. Everything looks pretty good. A bit of a mark down here. All right, let's throw this on see if it works. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. I have to turn that shoot off. Uh, I'll put this end back together since this is working, and then uh, we'll go to the other side, flip from there. Done. I'm not gonna lie, I thought that was uh, probably gonna be the only problem was just the belt on the other side, but it looks like we got a problem here. Another problem too is this little plastic piece is all screwed up. I'll stick you guys in there so you can see what's going on here. So we got upper gear up here attaches to the chute so that's actually what changes it looks like we got a worm gear here and then there's a little i'll put you guys upside down in there so you can see there's another gear over there how's it look 
Sorry, GoPro battery died, so I'm gonna have to finish this off with my phone here. Anyway, this handle was really tough to turn. I lubed up uh, this joint and then this joint right, uh, right here, and it was still tough to turn. Uh, underneath here, it felt like it was skipping a tooth or something, but the, the teeth all looked like they were in pretty good shape. What it ended up being was that this whole plate was actually bent down like this. So it bends right here and right here. This whole thing is set up here. And it was actually bent down. I don't know if there was a strike maybe on, um, on the handle or something up here, something hit it, or something fell on this part. But this whole section was bent down um, to the point where these teeth weren't really contacted. They're also contacting at like a 30 degree angle. Like the, this plate right here was up like this and the teeth were, wasn't contacting good. So I just bent this whole plate back up. We have good teeth contact now. I um, was able to uh, just throw some lithium grease around the, on the outside. And now, so when I turn it, it turns with a reasonable amount of resistance. It actually feels like most of the resistance is up in here. So I wonder if there's a uh, tension holder up there, but uh, it works decently now. So I'll throw this thing back together. All right, that uh, concludes the uh, snapper fix up here. Uh, like I said, we replaced the belts in here and then we had to fix the um, gear mesh just on the uh, chute for the chute. Uh, this actually works pretty good now. Before I couldn't even barely turn it, and now it's just pretty, pretty good, you know. Uh, engine starts super good. This is a pretty good engine. Turn the choke on it. Could use a new pe plastic piece on this side. Um, the, there's a little tab down here where my foot is. This one got snapped off, as you can see, it's loose there. This one got pulled out, so I have a washer. Just a bigger washer on the outside. The original bolt is actually just fine to uh, get in there. And then you can see down here, it's where the uh, there used to be a plug there. It's actually stuck in the metal on the inside part, and this one's still holding in. So this piece could be replaced, but other than that, it's pretty decent. All right, Facebook Marketplace, there it comes. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please consider subscribing. Have a good day. Thank you so much.